All right, we're here at my tiny traveling worm bin, and I am really excited about this one because I have been meaning to make a video about worm casting tea, but I met some recent college grads who helped me learn more about worm casting tea with the company they founded. All right, I'm here with Sam Baker from Wriggle Brew, and he actually is a recent grad from UCF. I went to University of Central Florida also. We met through my son, who is a senior there, and this is an award-winning company. So we're gonna get into that, but tell me what is Wriggle Brew and how did you all get started? So Wriggle Brew is a liquid organic fertilizer company, and of course we use worm castings as our main ingredient. Uh, worm castings, as you know, are produced by earthworms, and they're very, very nutrient-rich. And so what we do is we collect those earthworms castings from a couple of farmers around here and we use those castings kind of like you use hops in beer to make our unique brew. We add in our own kind of microbes, we add in a few extra ingredients, we brew it like a beer and the resulting liquid that you get out of that we can use on just about any plant and it's fantastic for boosting growth but it also helps defend the plant against certain kinds of pests and diseases. Oh my gosh it was so inspiring to meet and talk with them and to tour their warehouse and we are just going to go ahead and check on the worms while we're doing this and we're going to go ahead and feed them. So one of the questions I had was about the difference between my homemade worm casting tea and wiggle brew. So what is the difference between when I make worm casting tea? This sounds a lot more involved than what I'm doing. Yes, it's a very good question. And you're right, it is, it is much more involved than your standard worm tea. For example, we have our own custom microbiome that we add into it. So that alone adds a lot of complexity to it. But one of the big differentiators between this and your ordinary worm tea is that this lasts a lot longer. The way we're able to achieve that is because we have microbes in here that are designed to last much, much longer inside the bottle. So the bottle can last for six months to a year, sometimes even longer than that. So you can stick it in your car trunk, six months later it should be perfectly fine. I loved hearing about their processes and their supply chains. And let's go ahead and dig underneath and see if we have anything of any kind of resemblance to anything we fed. And last time we were in here, we gave them some lettuce stalks, some cucumber peels, piece of pumpkin, some strawberry tops, some celery, and one cranberry that I had popped. And somewhere in the middle was the cranberry. I'm really looking forward to seeing how that did because everybody is telling me that they take forever. Now I did pop it. so. So that should help them get to the flesh, but I don't see it in here. That, But that may be just because it's small and I can't find it yet. So when I was talking to them, I also wanted to know how NPK relates to worm casting tea. Most people, when they look for fertilizers, they look for NPK. Yes. And that is a lot with synthetic fertilizers, yes. organic. It's much lower. And I know worm casting tea is even lower than that. Yes. But that is not what worm casting tea is about. Tell me what worm casting tea is about and why is it a fertilizer? Why is it such a great fertilizer? Yeah, well, there's really two major components components that make it a really amazing fertilizer. And these do not involve NPK. They do not involve adding raw ingredients to the plant. Right. NPK stands for nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, and those are minerals, really, uh, when you get them on your plant. You know, you get urea, you get potassium oxides or whatever it might be, potash, things like that. Those are good because they give your plant immediately a boost to its growth. Mm -hmm but they're not good in the long term, right? right? If I give you steroids, you're definitely going to grow, but I wouldn't say that you're gonna grow in a healthy way. Right. And part of the reason is because plants need those nutrients to exist consistently in the soil. If you add them to it one time, yeah, it's gonna grow one time, but it's not gonna keep growing. What Wriggle Brew does and what worm teas in general try to do is they add what are called phytohormones. Um, these are a class of organic compounds. And what they do is they help the plant's natural systems to acquire nutrients more efficiently. Plants have very complex root structures. Those root structures are designed specifically to absorb the nutrients the plant needs. But sometimes for those root structures to grow, they need extra boosts. So Wriggle Brew and Worm Teas will provide lots of those different kinds of phytohormones from previous plants, but they'll also provide micronutrients, so things like zinc, things like boron, things like iron, those little minerals that help the plant's cellular systems operate a little more efficiently. And finally, they will add symbiotic organisms. So those are your microbes. And those do a lot of the heavy lifting because plants don't go alone. Their root systems are working in tandem with all kinds of different organisms. Sometimes they are symbiotic nematodes, sometimes they're fungi, mycorrhiza, those guys help fix phosphorus, they help fix nitrogen, they help fix different compounds from the atmosphere and from the soil and provide them to the plant in a sustainable long-term way. This is why I love these guys. The science <laughs> behind this is absolutely incredible. Thank you. Um, so if you're if you're wondering, is this good stuff? I mean, they have done the research. Oh my gosh, they are so knowledgeable. And check this out. I love seeing the dark 
colors within these red wigglers here and they are just doing a fantastic job we start with a thousand in here and they are getting bigger and bigger we had a lot of babies and i've got a video on when we kind of made the switch and how to start a worm bin of your own in fact that's one of the things that i think is really helpful about going to see the wriggle brew folks is if you're thinking about starting a worm bin what you can do is maybe get one of their bottles of worm casting tea use it on your plants and see if vermicomposting is something you want to do and is helpful for your garden check it out this is absolutely beautiful i love seeing these guys you know and then you get that bottle and then you like how it works and then maybe you want to start your own worm bin i think that would be really fantastic so of course it's important to know how to use wriggle brew and worm casting tea how, how should people use this when they buy wriggle brew yeah, well, one of the big advantages of it, like you said, is that you can use a lot or a little. You can dump it on your plant. There's not going to be burn. There's not going to be damage to the plant. There are two ways you can really use this. You can use this as a fertilizer and you can you can pour it on the plant. And so that way it gets into the roots and goes up through the body of the plant. Or you can use it kind of like an IPM, uh, integrated pest management, and you can spray it on the plant. And that helps you control things like nematodes, things like aphids, spider mites, mealybugs, thrip, different yeah. kinds of gnats, things like that. And it's very effective just in that use alone. Yeah, it's super easy, and they have a chart on their website on how to dilute it with water if you want to be able to make a little go a long way. So I've made my trough, and now let's add in some dry shredded cardboard bedding. This is my first time putting dry in, and that's because I'm really liking how the moisture level is doing. It's really stable, and we're going to put in some food that's going to get the rest of it wet. So here's what we had in mind to feed. We've got a lot of green beans and some peppers, so we'll just see how much we're going to put in here. Again, we've got about a thousand worms, so I don't want to overdo it. So I think we'll put in about four pepper tops and then we'll sprinkle in with some of these green beans and some other pepper chunks. So one of the things that really impressed me was the testing and feedback loop they've created for Wiggle Brew. And they've got a fantastic website Thank that you. explains all this stuff. And one of the things I saw on there was the testing. You guys do a lot of rigorous lot testing, of testing I yeah. see on plants and before and afters, that kind of thing. That's yes. something that you know my viewers absolutely love, seeing what it can actually do, not just hearing. Our background was science. Mine was chemistry, Gabe's was biochemistry, so huge fans of the scientific process. Part of our philosophy is, okay, does it really work? Does it really work verifiably, statistically? So we put Wriggle Brew through the paces. Gabe is constantly working to improve it. He's constantly making little tweaks to it. And so the product gets better and better as time goes on. Yeah, he is a mad scientist over here. His yes. setup is incredible. I mean, remind me of college. I was a biology major in the agar plates and going yeah. through. And I mean, down to counting colonies and individual cells so you can tell how yes. many are in their brew. It's, it's just fantastic. The science behind this is absolutely incredible. And I'm just adding in some coffee grounds. We put in some warm chow, just another food source for the worms here. And then finally, we'll add in some eggshell grit. This is very helpful for their gizzards, helps them make their food smaller. And it was amazing to see entrepreneurs right out of college with a vermicompost product and their story is incredible and started early. So tell me how you started. Take me from the beginning because it's an awesome story. Sure. So Gabe and I, Gabe's my co-founder of this business with me. We were friends in middle school. We were friends in high school. All throughout high school, we did the science fair, got really into biology and chemistry, and we were working on a project involving supercapacitors. We were trying to make um, dielectric for them. We were using compost originally, which we were pyrolyzing and turning it into something like biochar. We were really interested in that because it has a very high surface area, very good for capacitors, but we thought, is there a more sustainable way to get that? And Gabe stumbled upon a video of a worm farmer, and he was showing the worm castings and how they have, you know, they're made of, they're very carbonaceous, they've got all the surface area. So we thought, is there some way we could use that in our research? By this point, we were freshmen working in a lab at UCF, AMPAC, which is a nanomaterials lab, and we were looking into it and we were like, hmm, maybe this could work, maybe it couldn't, but around the same time, there was a whole bunch of really negative fertilizer runoff events, including one that personally affected me and my family. And so I thought, when, and I went to Gabe about this thought, is there some way we can use these worm castings to make a fertilizer that's actually competitive? Because worm castings are way more sustainable. They're way more organically friendly. One thing just turned into another. We went down a rabbit hole. Four years later, we ended up with this. <laughs> that is incredible. Now I'll add just a little bit of shredded cardboard right on top. Finally, let's meet the other co-founder and chief research officer slash head brewer. So I see over here, you've got a microscope and yep. on here, it looks like I'm looking at some, some spores and some other yep. stuff. Tell me what you're doing when you're, you know, looking in there. What are you looking for and how are you adding that and, and figuring stuff out for the brew? So I use a lot of dyes um, to figure out specifically which microbes are there mm -hmm. and so that, so that I can identify um, good ones and bad ones and make sure that they're always the same. So this is a control soil sample with no wriggle brew added. You can see that there's 
not a whole lot of activity and it's uh, very varied compared to soil that has had wriggle brew added to it. You can see a lot of activity and very controlled activity. We also do uh, plant growing experiments. That's we typically four. let it, the plants grow for about a month mm -hmm. um, to see if there's any significant difference over yeah. that period. And you can see the results pretty quick. Like within a week, oh, someone yeah. is going to see a difference yes. with wriggle brew, yes. right? That yes. was fantastic. We've had a lot of people, especially even big growers, tell us like how much our how much we've reduced their pest problems. Oh yeah. Uh, because obviously they're. If you have a lot of plants, there's going to be a lot of pests attracted to it. It was yeah. so fun to take the traveling worm bin and meet these guys and learn how they are running a growing, successful compost worm-based business so close to me in Florida. Check out these beautiful worms right here. So if you are thinking about starting your own worm bin or using worm casting tea as a fertilizer, I highly suggest you pick up a bottle of Wiggle Brew to see how much you and your plants like it. I think it's a great way to start your journey on worm farming, and I know you'll be hooked, so get your bottle of wriggle brew like I did at a local nursery and for those of you that are not here in Florida I have Amazon links to wiggle brew and wiggle brews website where you can buy it online their story was so inspiring and it was just an absolute pleasure going to meet them and tour their facility and this video is not sponsored I went to a local nursery and bought wriggle brew they wanted to pass on some for me to try but I insisted that I support their company and go out and buy it so next feeding with this traveling worm bin will be on another Another adventure so I hope you'll join me and with that I hope you're having a great day I hope your worm bins are doing well so happy vermicomposting everybody take care now